Okay, so we just derived the forward and backward Euler schemes to numerically integrate an ordinary differential equation like um, x dot equals f of x uh, with some initial condition x at time 0 equals x naught. And we're saying that x might be a vector of states of interest. So now what we're going to do is we're going to cook up an interesting ordinary differential equation and try out some of these integration schemes. Okay. So the system that I want to integrate is a really, really famous system uh, in biology called the Lotka-Volterra model. And this was discovered um, a bit after the First World War independently um, by an Italian and an American mathematician. Okay, so we're going to look at the Lotka-Volterra equations. Um, one of these scientists, I think it was Volterra, was looking at populations of fish, and uh, Lotka was looking at chemical reactions. So totally different, different fields, but um, they came up with the same basic equation. Okay? So what we're looking at here, the way I think about this, is that we have two populations of animals, and it's kind of a predator-prey model. So this is one of the simplest predator-prey uh, models. Okay, and what we're going to try to do is we're going to set up a model where we have a predator species and a prey species. So I like to think of bunnies and wolves. Okay, so my state is going to consist of um, x and y. This is kind of my vector state. x and y are the population of bunnies and the population of wolves. And we know that what bunnies do in the absence of wolves is they just explode their population exponentially. In the absence of any bunnies to eat, wolves will die and decay and eventually go to zero wolves. And if there are both wolves and bunnies, then the wolves keep the bunnies in check and the bunnies you know, feed the wolves and there's some kind of an equilibrium that might get reached. Okay, so what we're going to cook up is a model, a differential equation for how the population of bunnies and wolves changes in time. Okay, and that's the local Lotka Volterra model. Okay, and this is a relatively simple model to cook up. So the first thing we want to say is that what we really care about is that we have some uh, DDT of both of these quantities. Okay, so we have x dot and y dot. So the derivative of my bunny population in time and the derivative of my wolf population in time equals some function. So the first thing is in the absence of any wolves, if all I have is bunnies, then we know that bunnies are going to grow exponentially at some rate, which I'm going to call a. So x dot equals a times x. And without any um, Without any wolves, the solution of this would just be exponential growth at some rate, uh, e to the a t. Okay? And in the absence of any bunnies, we're going to say that our wolves just decay at some constant rate. So the, the population of wolves decreases, it changes at a negative rate equal to minus c times y. So this would correspond to exponential decay eventually going to zero. But what's interesting is that we know that bunny populations you know, would naturally grow exponentially, but they're going to be held in check by the number of wolves. So the way that we model this crudely is we say, I look at how many bunnies I have times how many wolves I have, and that gives me a rough estimate of how many wolves are eating bunnies. Okay, so if I have you know, a bajillion bunnies but only one wolf, that one wolf can only eat so fast. But if I have a bajillion bunnies and 50 wolves, they're going to eat 50 times faster, uh, and so on and so forth. And if I have less bunnies, then the, that many wolves are going to eat less. And so I have my bunny population also decreases, it, they get eaten, at some rate given by some number b times my bunny population times my wolf population. So a and b and c are just numbers. x and y are these changing populations. And similarly, we know that our wolves, you know, with no bunnies, they'll just eventually die out and decay. This is like on a desert island where there's just bunnies and just wolves. 
and some stuff for the bunnies to eat. But we know that if there are bunnies, then the wolves will eat them and be able to reproduce. And so they increase, the wolf population increases at a rate proportional to how many bunnies they eat, which is given by D times X times Y. Okay? Now, this is a really contrived toy model. Um, you know, no one really thinks that this exactly describes any physical system. But what's beautiful about this is that Lotko and Volterra wrote down a very simple model with a couple of terms, exponential growth, exponential decay, uh, bunnies getting eaten, wolves eating, and then reproducing. And with this very simple model, you can actually reproduce a lot of the interesting phenomenon that you actually see in real predator-prey systems. So this is a, a real success story um, in modeling or in you know, reduced modeling. This is a reduced representation of a real complicated system. So we're going to write down our forward Euler integration scheme from before. And then in the next segment, we're going to code it up. So what we have is the following. For forward Euler, um, I'm just going to write it up here. For forward Euler, F E, we said that x at time k plus 1, this is my vector, my whole state you know, of all of the populations. This is a vector of my state, is equal to um, my vector at time k plus delta t times my right-hand side function evaluated at, f, at x of k. Okay, so this is my forward Euler scheme. And this means if I have my initial condition, I can step it forward and see what my state would be, 1 delta t, 2 delta t, 3 delta t in the future. And I can build up this trajectory and see what these populations are going to do. Okay, so I'm going to do the same thing here. And I'm going to build up an iteration for these. I'm going to say, well, x at time k plus 1 and y at time k plus 1 are equal to the following. Okay, x at time k plus 1 is just equal to my state at time k, right, x, k, y, k, my bunny population at time k, my wolf population at time k, plus delta t times this right-hand side function evaluated at x, k, and y, k. Okay, so that looks like um, a xk minus b xk yk, and this is uh, minus c yk plus d xk yk. Okay, now this might look a little complicated, but it's actually relatively straightforward, right? If I have x naught and y naught, all of the terms on the right would just depend on x naught and y naught, and I could plug those in and I would get x1 and y1. Now that I know x1 and y1, I can plug those into the right-hand sides. I know everything on the right-hand side, and I would get x2 and y2, and so on and so forth. I can step this forward, and I can see how my bunny and wolf populations evolve in time. Okay, so this is my nice forward Euler scheme. If I wanted to be a little bit more fancy about writing this, I would just develop some right-hand side function. So right-hand side of my vector of x and y would equal um, this right-hand side vector would equal a vector of ax minus bxy minus cx plus dxy. That's what this right-hand side function would be. And I would just say that this equals, um, you know, x and y at time k plus 1 equals x and y at time k plus delta t times my right-hand side function evaluated at x and y at time k. So this is just another way, way of writing it in terms of some right-hand side function that I'm def defining this right-hand side of my differential equation. Okay, so in the next segment, we're going to code up this, uh, this forward Euler scheme for this system. We're going to integrate it forward and see what it does. Okay, and then I'm going to finally introduce a last integration scheme called Runge-Kutta. So one thing I should tell you is that these forward Euler schemes are really easy to understand. They're easy to derive. They're easy to code up. So that's why I'm using this is mostly just for an educational uh, demo of what an integrator does, how it works. It's an iteration. But in practice, these are so inaccurate that people don't really use them. So instead, what people do is they use so really, you want to use 
a Runga Kutta integrator. This is what's built into MATLAB. This is um, ODE45 is MATLAB's built-in Runga Kutta integrator, or some other fancy higher order integrator. So there's you know dozens and dozens of integrators. This is a really good all-purpose. This is like your all-purpose integrator that's built into MATLAB. So we're going to compare this easy to understand forward Euler integrator against this built-in all-purpose MATLAB integrator. Okay, and we're going to do that on this example in the next segment. Okay, good. Thank you.